We're on your side tonight with the closure of a chapter for a local HBCU. Last month, Clarence Armbrister saw his final commencement as the 14th acting president of Johnson C. Smith University before his retirement. With a chapter of his life now complete, he recently reflected on the challenges and the achievements of the past five years. Our Steve Crump brings us the story. Last month's commencement for Johnson C. Smith University graduates will likely be remembered as the day award-winning singing sensation Anthony Hamilton received an honorary degree. But the occasion also marked the swan song for University President Clarence Armbrister. His retirement is now reality, and the leader of this campus sat down with us for what could be called an exit interview. I think Johnson C. Smith uh, is really, really uh, in the consciousness of this community. Raising the profile of this university during his five-year run brought its share of successes. However, the challenge of running a place of learning during COVID remains seared in his psyche. That probably was one of the toughest challenges uh, that, I, that I've ever had. It created some significant challenges for the university, particularly around enrollment, from which we're still trying to get back from. So, but it was hard. It was the number one, if you go back and look at all the agendas of all of our cabinet meetings, it was the number one subject for probably two years on our agendas. Under his watch, he saw the completion of a light rail line that ends steps away from the JCSU campus had a major role in the mayor's mask ball that raised a record amount of money for the United Negro College Fund and helped create a master plan that includes a facelift for the renowned Biddle Hall. It really has been a team effort. Uh, uh, you know, obviously the resources that we've been able uh, to uh, generate uh, here uh, from our longtime partners. Armbrister is shy about taking credit for any self-worthy campus accomplishments and is quick to share praise with his colleagues. We have great commitment from those folks to really commit to Johnson C. Smith, and that's a big help as well. HBCUs found themselves basking in the glow of Kamala Harris being elected Vice President of the United States, considering she graduated from Washington, D.C.'s Howard University. There are examples even before Kamala Harris, but her elevation uh, to the vice presidency, literally one heartbeat away from running this country, was something that we all took pride in. I Believe me, we all took pride in this. So it resonated loudly with presidents such as yourself and those that do what you do on other HBCU campuses. Absolutely, because you know what, what we always say, if you can see it, you can achieve it. What's your parting shot? You have the floor for the last word. <laughs> My party shot really is, I'd like to say, a hearty thank you uh, to, to, to Charlotte. And joining us here in studio now is Steve Crump. After that conversation, first of all, heck of a nice guy to talk to, isn't he? He just has a lot of fun. You've to, talked to, to him. I've talked to him. And yeah. uh, easygoing, doesn't yep. seem to get flustered about all no. the things. And I know he's excited about picking up his golf clubs. <laughs> yeah, and, and he's going to stay here in North Carolina. That's he right. He and his wife are going to be moving yeah. to Wilmington. Uh, you know, many want to leave a place a little better than they found it. Do you think he did that? I think in some ways he did, you know, based on some of the innovative ideas that have been carried out. Again, we go back to things such as the light rail. Uh, mm -hmm. There have been a number of programs that have been new that happened under his watch. But you heard it right there in the piece, Jamie, from the standpoint of where they're still bouncing back from COVID. I yep. mean, it's one of those things of where I guess it's incremental baby steps, you know, as far as how do you get the enrollment up. But at the same time, uh, you know, he's a guy that looks at the situation with the glass being half yep. full. And they're moving up the rankings that, that we see every year, too. Absolutely. So that, that, that's really, really encouraging. But, yeah, as you mentioned, it, the pandemic obviously was just devastating for especially a smaller school like this and the resources it took to deal with it. Yeah, you're talking about an enrollment of 1,100 where, you, t mm. you know, basically every student has a job, has a role. And then when you look at everything that occurs, you know, in terms of the, you know, a student body and the financial stability of that particular place of learning, I mean, it's very critical. And he's very proud of the plan they put together because they really, he does, I think, feel like he's got them on the right path to success now. Yeah, we mentioned Biddle Hall, but there is a whole capital improvement plan, yeah. as they like to refer to the gates on Beatty's Ford Road. Mm -hmm. Well, some of that goes well beyond the gates uh, in terms of 
what we've seen with the Mosaic Village and things right. that have happened uh, outside of the Johnson C. Smith University campus as has traditionally been known. Uh, does this set up his successor to succeed? I think it does. I think it does. And uh, his successor uh, uh, starts on August 1st, uh, Valerie Kinlock, who's a Charleston native. Mm -hmm. But the amazing thing about it is she's a JCSU right. grad and was voted unanimously by the Board of Trustees. So, you know, she comes in with some good credentials, uh, yeah. uh, University of Pittsburgh, as well as Ohio State, Columbia University in New York. So, you know, it's one of those things of where not only has she been a student there, but she's also been a part of the JCSU family mm -hmm. years after leaving as a student. So much history uh, on that campus up there on the hill that overlooks the city, right? Absolutely. Friday is officially his last day, yep. but from what I found out earlier this evening, he's working out a few vacation days. <laughs> so, he? Okay. so Friday will be it. Yeah. He's not on campus, we're still yeah. on the payroll. Tea times to be made That's after it. all, right? Go enjoy your retirement. Two woods and five irons. You got it right, buddy. I uh, appreciate you stopping by as always, Steve. Uh, let's check your forecast right now. Let's uh, talk about that coming up in just a minute. But first, more news ahead.